When you're first starting out and exploring Notion as an individual, the free plan is fine. But as soon as you start to work with team members, you will be required to upgrade to a paid plan. So let's go ahead and look at the different pricing options so that you can choose the option that is best suited to your needs. We're going to go to settings and we're going to select upgrade plan. That will take us to our pricing plan. You'll see there are four options here. Now we've already talked about the free version. It's great for getting started, but then we want to go ahead and upgrade. And now we have plus business or enterprise. One important note is that you are charged per member on your account. So if we were to click on compare all features now, you'll see all three come with unlimited blocks, unlimited file uploads. There is a difference in your page history. So as you go up, you get a little bit longer. You'll notice that business and enterprise both allow you to verify pages to make sure they're current and up to date. Moving down to guest seats. This is a number of external guests that you can invite to your Notion account. Now you can switch these out so you can add a guest, say it's a client you're currently working with, then remove them and add a new one, that's fine. But you still don't want to have to be doing that every single time. So on the plus plan, you get up to 100 guest seats and on the business plan, 250. Enterprise starts at 250. All of them offer team spaces, both open and closed. But if you want to create private team spaces where other members can't see or access them unless they are directly invited, we'd have to go for business and enterprise. So you're getting those advanced team space permissions. Now scrolling down, looking at Notion AI, it's becoming a bigger part of what we do and how we work in all of our tools. With the plus plan, you get a limited trial of Notion AI before you have to upgrade. With business and enterprise, it is included as part of the pricing. And if we look at meeting notes, enterprise, search and research mode, this is similar. You're very limited on the plus plan with what you can add as you upgrade to business and enterprise. Not only is the Notion AI taken in your workspace content, but you have access to external sources, whether it's Claude AI, Gemini, Open AI, and then you can also integrate your tools for context as well. Thinking about Google Drive, Slack. So these are key, especially when considering how you want to adopt AI in your Notion workspace. Scrolling down, we have Notion Calendar, Mail, and then Mail AI. Again, same thing, AI is limited on the plus plan. And then scrolling down to Forms, you'll see that only on the business and enterprise plan do you have access to Form Logic, which means if you want Forms set up, you can do that on any plan. But if you want to add that conditional logic, then you will need to upgrade. You have access to API and webhooks and beds on every plan. And then if we're thinking about connected properties on databases, on the plus plan, you connect Google Drive. On the business plan, you have a lot more options. So we're thinking Figma, GitHub, Zendesk, etc. Automations, again, you're getting more access to automations on the business and enterprise plan. And you're able to sync content on the business and enterprise plan as well with certain external tools. And you can see those tools here. Then looking at web publishing, if you want to publish sites, you get up to five. And then if we look to admin and security, this is where you see the real difference, particularly in business and enterprise with additional security options being added at every level. And you can see on enterprise, you get a lot more access to permissions, roles, analytics, content search, etc. Now, another thing to know is that if you require HIPAA compliance, this is an enterprise feature. So when it comes to the difference between plus and business, the things I would be thinking about is my use of Notion AI 
and the third party tools that we want to directly integrate into Notion. So not just an embed, but directly integrate. And then when we're looking at the difference between business and enterprise, first I'm considering if I require HIPAA compliance, and then it becomes about security measures above all else. So let's head on over to Notion's pricing page where we're able to see this information a little bit clearer. So you can pay monthly or pay annually. You save 20% annually. If you come over to the right, you can change the currency here. So we've got US dollars and euros. And once again, you're charged per member. So you have to really consider which plan you want, especially in the beginning. You can, of course, upgrade or downgrade at any time. If you're really unsure which plan to go for, my recommendation would be to start with the plus plan. And then as you come into friction points where you're thinking, oh, I need a little bit more than this, then consider upgrading to business. Once you do subscribe, you'll see a new billing option appear in your settings. Here you can see your workspace balance and you're able to view and download your invoices. This lesson has been part of our Navigating Notion series. You will find access to all links and resources in the description below. And if you have any questions at all, please do leave a comment. I'm here to help. If you'd like to continue watching, I recommend this one next.